program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Okay, I've been thinking over some things that have been brought up regarding the design ethic that's been apparently present in Star Trek Discovery with that trailer. Specifically how everything looks straight out of J.J. Trek and bears no resemblance to TOS, despite being supposedly set only 10 years prior to TOS, and this blatant break in consistency just doesn't matter and I should just shut up and eat my Star Trek pablum like a good little Trekkie. The rebuttals generally consist of, oh come on, it's 2017, not 1964. You can't expect them to stick to these creaky old sets and maybe left off the screen. On both points, I say bullshit. Those on my side of the fence, and frankly I'm getting to like more and more, aren't arguing for return to plywood set pieces and resin buttons cast in ice trays. There's a big honk of difference between design standards and produ production standards and production design. You need to learn the freaking difference if you're going to be taking this seriously in this whole thing. Because, you know, those designs built with modern materials to current production standards, just a little added detail, you know, for stuff that wasn't necessarily been picked up by the old by the old cameras, like lettering on the buttons, which was there, but when you light it up, you can't see it on, you know, on that old set. Because <clears throat> there's actually a lot more detail there than you thought. Those work just fine. They still look very futuristic. Because, you know, they're laid out well, but you can't tell what these buttons are, so don't tell me it doesn't look, you know, doesn't look advanced. And the thing, the various times that they've been gone back to those things, they haven't said, well, let's show them what it really looked like. No. Guess what? That is what it really looked like. Between relics, trials and tribulations, uh, in a mirror darkly, sorry, that's the way it looked. It had been reinforced repeatedly. So that's the period you stuck with there, guys. And so any argument, well, that's not really what it really looked like. No, that's really what it really would look like. Deal with it. So, so and then also, I mean, it's a fictional world, doesn't matter. Well, it's not a historical document. Uh, yes, it is. Now it is. Because we're not just talking about some one-off show. Nobody cares about it. It's now a very large, sprawling, fictional universe spanning about four centuries with a fairly detailed history. And... <clears throat> You're going to plop a series right in the middle of that, in a very well-documented part of that series, in that fictional universe. You damn well better do your homework, and you better be at least try to be consistent with what's been laid out. Especially when you crunch the numbers a little bit. It was like 10 years before the original series. The Cage, you know, the, the Menagerie is about a couple year or so in, if you know where you put the starting point. So, Discovery is right about the same time as the cage. So guess what? There's your touchstone. We've seen a show in the ship in the 2250s. We've seen the uniforms. We've seen the technology. Discovery, no resemblance whatsoever. They don't look like they're in the same fleet at the same time. You can't make that argument. Sorry. So, you're not going to, you know, because... Conceptually, it would, it would be perfectly feasible. The Discovery runs across the Enterprise, commanded by Captain Christopher Pike with his half-Vulcan science officer named Spock. They're not going to look like... You know, these people do not look like close to the same thing. So if anything, they're trying to run as far away from that period as possible. They're looking look like J.J. Trek, which is specifically what they said it's not connected to. They said this was original series. Well, prove it. Only thing you've proven is you've gone the opposite direction. So this just sort of brings a question to the producers. If you care so little for the designs of this era, or for the fans of this era, then why put your series right smack dab in the middle of that era? And go with stuff that will guarantee to bring the shitstorm that is coming right now. Because if this was set post-Nemesis with pretty much the same designs, nobody would care. It looks perfectly at home flying alongside Voyager or the Enterprise E. But you put this next to a first pilot Enterprise, and no, it doesn't work. And sorry, but we've got three or four different series that say, that's the way it looked, not yours. Guess who loses? I don't care if you got the cock right. It's not going to sell. And this whole thing, the fact they've gone through this, when anybody with half a brain could have told you this is to be the result, does this look like the work of competent producers? Yeah. These people look like they do know what they're doing. It's, a, you know, it's another case of 
writers who think they're smarter than the source material and who apparently hold the fans in some level of contempt of that source material. You know, the fans of the source material in some level of contempt. So it's like, if you'd be much rather doing something else, you know, writing some other space show, then please, go write your own space show. Leave Star Trek alone. Let somebody in who knows something about Star Trek take over, try and salvage the sinking garbage scow. Otherwise, this is going to be probably the first Star Trek series to be canceled within three episodes. Because the blowback will be that bad. You'll get big numbers for the pilot because people are curious, and then no one's going to tune in on their all, all access thing. So, CBS, you've been warned. <laughs>